child welfare in Kansas. Kansas currently has just under 6,000 children in the foster care system. Foster care is just one part of the child welfare system. The child welfare system is a group of services designed to promote the well-being of children and includes schools, teachers, mental health, doctors, legal, court, CASA, law enforcement, child care, department for children and families, child placing agency, case management provider, prevention agencies, and more. Children come into the foster care system in two ways. The primary way children come into care is by Department for Children and Families investigations, where they evaluate an allegation and determine the next steps. If nothing is needed, the case is closed. If the child can stay in their home, Family First Prevention Services or Family Preservation or other prevention programs are offered. Or if the child cannot safely stay in their home, DCF will request that court consider removal of the child into temporary custody and if the court determines to remove the child from the home, they will be placed in foster care. The second way children come into care is by non-DCF removals. This could be petitions for DCF custody written by DA, ADA, CSO, or private citizens. These removals are not initiated or requested by DCF. Our courts determined and make up approximately 40% of children in foster care. If the child can stay in the home, DCF may refer the family for services from the Families First Prevention Services Act. They include mental health services, substance use disorder treatment, parent skill building, and kinship navigator programs. Family preservation services is another option that DCF may utilize to support families if the child can stay in the home. There are three contractors that provide these services, TFI, Cornerstones of Care, and DECA. If a child needs a placement outside the home, they are referred to one of the four case management providers based on where they are located within the eight areas. Areas one and two are St. Francis Ministries. Area three is KVC. Area four is TFI. Area five is Cornerstones of Care. Area six is KVC. Area seven is St. Francis Ministries. And area eight is TFI. The CMPs manage the case and serve as the child's worker. They coordinate with the child placing agencies to place children in the foster homes. St. Francis Ministries is a CMP for three areas and has a foster care caseload of 2,704, which is almost half the kids in care. 1,238 are with foster families and 992 with relatives. KVC is a CMP for two areas and has a foster care caseload of 1,444. 617 are with foster families and 651 with relatives. TFI is a CMP for two areas and has a foster care caseload of 1,213. 521 are with foster families and 527 with relatives. Cornerstones of Care is a CMP for one area and has a foster care caseload of 552. 193 are with foster families and 280 with relatives. There are 38 CPAs in Kansas that provide foster and or adoption services. The CPAs that support foster homes do the following. License foster family homes, train families, serve as a foster family workers, and help place children in their homes. CMPs and CPAs work together to support children in foster care. Kansas has 15 CPAs that currently sponsor and support the 2,320 licensed foster homes across the state. 10 of those agencies provide support in 99% of Kansas foster homes. KVC has 542 homes, St. Francis Ministries with 453 homes, DECA with 422 homes, TFI with 419 homes, Ember Hope Youthville with 114 homes, Wichita Children's Home with 104 homes, Eckerd with 92 homes, Restoration with 79 homes, Cornerstones of Care with 48 homes, and Calm with 32 homes. The CMPs can place children in any of the CPAs statewide. They try to keep a child close to home and siblings together when possible. They also want a least restrictive placement and placement stability and minimal amount of child moves. Foster care provides a temporary arrangement for a child when they are not able to live with their biological parent or other natural caregivers. There are several types of foster care to meet the unique needs of each child including relative, kinship care, 
non-related kin, traditional foster care, therapeutic or medical foster care, group homes, and respite care. There are many contacts that are important for children in foster care, such as parents and relatives, siblings, the foster or adoptive family, plus many more that may provide interaction. Some additional living options for children in care include qualified residential treatment programs, youth residential care, independent living programs, and psychiatric residential treatment facility. Qualified residential treatment programs are trauma-informed out-of-home facilities for children with serious emotional or behavioral disorders. Youth residential care is a non-secure 24-hour group home. Independent living programs provide housing assistance and other supports to older children who are likely aging out of the foster care system. The goal is to increase self-sufficiency and successfully transition youth to adulthood. A psychiatric residential treatment facility is a short-term treatment center for children. A PRTF will provide all psychiatric services for a child on site and includes family involvement. The child must be evaluated and meet medical necessity through the MCO in order to obtain treatment in a PRTF. The primary goal is to maintain or safely return the child back to their family. If that isn't an option, the CMP and CPAs work to find adoptive homes or independent living services for children leaving foster care. Child welfare providers help children by ensuring safety, achieving permanency, and strengthening family and child well-being.